Hello students, we will do another anthropological theory, diffusionism in this lecture. Diffusionism, 19th century evolutionists were well aware that a full understanding of culture required explanations of both their similarities and differences. They were of view that similarities emerged because of mental uniformity and caused mankind to react in the same way to uniform environmental conditions. Culture in the same stage of development were not related because a greater or lesser part of cultural inventory was discovered freely. When uniform traits appeared in the area far apart and without its historical contact, it was accepted that they had evolved separately. The similar parallel inventions were the strongest proof of psychic unity. During 20th century, several schools of thought appeared in Britain, America and Germany that claimed to be anti-evolutionists, even maintained that cultural traits were more often invented than imitated. Diffusion does not necessarily deny evolution, but certainly interferes in the neatness of evolutionary schemes. Diffusion is taking over of traits by imitation, while migration implies that culture barrier broken away from their original settlements and moved to other parts of the world, taking their cultural inventory with them, but adapting it to new environmental conditions. In history, certain societies or places have served as centers from where cultural traits have spread to other parts of the world. These centers of cultural diffusion were more progressive societies and developed rapidly by invention and discovery. Egypt was from many centuries a cultural center from where cultural traits in the fields of arts and political organization spread to northwestern Europe and to east as far as India. Rome was a great cultural center from where Roman law spread in most countries in Europe. In Asia, Chinese Middle Kingdom was a dominant cultural center where cultural traits spread throughout Asiatic mainland. Conditions related to cultural diffusion. Any cultural group will adopt a cultural trait of another cultural group only when it would be meaningful and useful either economically or socially or both. In course of diffusion, cultural trait may not remain in original form, but changes in it can take place due to different environmental situation in the other cultural group. Process of diffusion of culture traits always flow from high culture to low culture or developed culture to underdeveloped culture. Process of diffusion may create culture change in groups adopting culture of other groups. Sometimes borrowed culture traits get assimilated easily but sometimes they are responsible for many changes. Schools of diffusion Diffusionists have not shown an anonymity on the question as to which was the place from where culture traits reached other parts of the world. As a result of difference in their opinions, the diffusionists are divided in three schools, namely British School of Diffusion, German School of Diffusion and American School of Diffusion. Moving forward, we will now see the different philosophers related to different schools of diffusionism. British School of Diffusion The philosophers related to this school are G. E. Smith, W. J. Perry and W. H. R. Rivers. The German School of Diffusion has four philosophers related to it. F. Radzell F. Grabner, F. W. Smith, L. Frobenius, American School of Diffusionism. 
Franz Boas, Clark Whistler, and A. L. Kroeber. In this particular lecture, we'll just do about the British school of diffusionism and its thought of G. E. Smith, British school of diffusion. British school of diffusion is also known as Pan Egyptian school. This school came into being too late in the history of anthropology, but was first to disappear. Elliot Smith was the founder of this school, and W. J. Perry was his true follower. They are designated as extreme diffusionists and Egyptologists because of them, Egypt was considered as the only center of culture from where cultural trades diffused and migrated to rest parts of the world. G. E. Smith or Gafton Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith was basically an anatomist by profession. On his first visit to Egypt, he became a great admirer of Egypt. Upon his return to Cambridge, he was surprised to see similarities between Egyptian complex of large stone monuments in association with sun worship. In his famous book entitled The Origin of Civilization was published in 1928. He emphasized upon Egypt as the origin of civilization. Ancient Egypt invented a full-fledged system of hydraulic agriculture, invented necessary items like pottery, weaving, the wheel, plow, and writing. They began to build cities and established law, government, and religion. They mummified dead bodies and built graves in the name of the dead. Smith was well aware that man was more older than civilization. He called all the people outside the civilization as natural man. He described their culture or collection of negative traits because there was no clothing, housing, ornament, government burials, etc. He was rather unique in his attempt to deprive natural man even of magic. He popularized the idea that man was basically uninventive. Thus, he discarded the idea of multiple origins, independent inventions, multiple uh, psychic unity, progress, and survivals. Let us do some multiple choice questions related to this talk, lecture. Question 1. Which of the following is not a condition for adoption of a cultural trait by a cultural group? Option A. The trait must be meaningful, economical or socially sustainable for the new group. Option B. Trait does not change and it is adopted in its original form. Option C. Cultural traits always flow from high culture to low culture. Option D, the new trait might lead to cultural changes adopted by the other group. The correct answer for this question is trait does not change and is adopted in its original form. That is option B. Trait adopted in the other cultural group might change according to the local environmental conditions. Question number two. Who among the following does not belong to British Diffusionist School? Option A. G. E. Smith Option B. W. J. Perry Option C. W. H. R. Rivers Option D. L. Freubenius The correct answer for this question is Option D. L. Freubenius Option Question 3 which of the following is known as Pan-Egyptian School? Option A. British Diffusionist School Option B. German Diffusionist School Option C. American Diffusionist School and Option D. None of the above The correct answer for this question is Option A. British Diffusionist School The book entitled The Origin of Civilization was written by Option A. V.G. Child, Options B, W.H.R. Rivers, 
ऑप्शन सी जी ई स्मिथ ऑप्शन डी एफ रेड सेल द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन श्री सी जी ई स्मिथ With this, we come to an end to this introductory lecture of diffusion diffusionism. In this lecture, we did diffusionism as a concept, conditions related to diffusion of a cultural trait from one group to another. What are the schools of diffusionism? British school of diffusionism in specific, and we learned about the thoughts of G. E. Smith. in british school of diffusionism thank you